Do you want to learn from others' mistakes or make them all on your own? We're going to talk about that and more, so stay tuned. Hello, America. I'm Lynn. And I'm Danny, and welcome to RV America. Welcome back. A wise person once told me to learn from others' mistakes because you'll never live long enough to make them all on your own. That's right. There's an interesting question that's on our Facebook page and on other sites that we visit quite often. It said, so what was the silliest or dumbest mistake you've made at RVing? And we want to talk about a lot of those things today because there were a lot of uh, responses. A lot of responses. A lot of comments out there so we want to take those and hopefully help you and help us learn from other people's mistakes you know we mentioned that in our video six keys to a successful trip and we'll link that up here where we talked about learning from other people's mistakes and that's what we want to do today so i thought we'd start with the awning because there were a lot of comments that were made about people making mistakes concerning their awnings what kind of mistakes can you make with the awning well, let's read some of the comments. Well, Ralph said, We were leaving our campsite. We drove real slow towards the entrance when a ranger came racing up to, the, to us beside us. My wife lowered her window and he told us, Your awning's still out. How embarrassing. Luckily, there was no damage. And wow. I th think you've got some? I do. I have a couple. Left the awning up in a horrible rainstorm and it busted the support arm. Mm. A lot of trouble there. Also, always bring your awning in if you're going to be away. A storm popped up and we got to our camper just in time to watch the wind fold it like a cheap sheet. So if you Google any RV awning accidents, you will see that these things will fold up. So my, my thought is to you, what would you learn from these comments? And what would you say some of the things we learned? Some of the things I learned is do your walk around before you take off. Yeah, you don't, Always. Want, you don't want to be the guy that's driving down the campground with your awning out. And don't just look down around your tires, but also look up. There are things up like the awning. We learned that if, if you're going away, bring your awning in. You never know what's going to happen. As some of these people said, they just went away for a short period and came back and their awning was ripped apart. And also, if you're going to sleep or you're not going to be outside with it, it's always a good idea. If you're not using it, put it up. You never know when a freak rainstorm is going to come through or thunderstorm with a big bust of wind and then there goes your awning. Right. And let me say this, we're not here to make fun of the people that gave these comments because we're going to make mistakes. We have made some mistakes. And You, you make mistakes? Once, and once. I think I made a mistake once. Oh. But I think I was wrong. Oh. So, it's, it's, as we've always said, it's not a matter of if you're going to make a mistake, it's when you're going to make when. a mistake. So, let's learn from these people. And like I said, we might chuckle as they chuckle at some of their things, but we're not truly not making fun of anybody that's added a comment. So. Well, we made our way around to the gray tank and black tank valves, to the sewer area, and Man, did we get some stories on this. <laughs> That's right. They were not good ones either. So what could go wrong? Well, let's hear what Beth had to say. My husband was in the process of showing me how to cut on our tank flush and dump the black water tank into our sewer hookup. We made sure everything was hooked up correctly. We cut on the water and went inside to watch the gauge. Within a few minutes, my husband said, It sounds like it's raining. Nope. We forgot to open the black tank and had a major gusher. Whoops. On the roof. A major gusher on the roof. Got the water cut off and boom, black water tank is down. What a mess. Well, it's hard to top that one, I will say. <laughs> um, Susie says, dumped black water on my neighbor's front steps a really nice motor coach one minute before they were leaving for a day trip as I stood there with a bro broken sewer 
connection in my dirty hands and poop on my shoes, they quickly closed the front door <laughs> and went out the back door. Thank goodness they had a back door. Oh. Took us an hour to clean it up. How to win friends and influence people there. <laughs> you had another one? I have one more. <laughs> okay. And then Eric said, emptied a 40 gallon black water tank into a 30 gallon blue tote buggy. Yeah. The, the things you would empty your sewage into to take care it off the, the tote. How do you think that works? Well, the math tells me 40 gallons will not fit in a 30 gallon container, so 10 gallons went somewhere. So I think what we can learn from that is maybe if you're going, if you're set up in a place for an extended period of time and you're going to have to take and pull a little, one of those little Thanks. tote things up to the dump station, perhaps you might want to think about emptying your black water tank when it's about half full because those gauges aren't always correct. Yeah, you definitely don't want to wait till it's full because, but if it's a half full to maybe two thirds, Full, then that would be good to do that. So know the math, the math rules. Another thing we learned from these, and there were several, we just read three, but they were numerous things where people had trouble with the black uh, tank and, the, and uh, emptying the sewage. And you don't want to have those kind of accidents. So if you see your uh, sewage ho sewer hose starting to have wear and a little bit mm -hmm. of tear to it, it's, you can see where it, the plastic started being bent too much or maybe the connections are starting to get a little brittle. It's better to change those things now than have a mess on your, literally on your hands. <laughs> so uh, I would do that. And Not same thing with the electric. You know, there's two things that I would always err on getting new early. It would be the sewer, sewage hose and connectors and maybe some kind of, if you had to wear on an electric uh, cord or, or extension cord. Yeah. Nothing lasts forever. Not sewer hoses, not anything. So everything has to be replaced and you don't want the poop on your neighbor's steps. That's right, that's right. So another thing uh, I wanna mention is that when you're going, you do need to flush your tank. You have the flush valve uh, over here that you can, but if you're gonna close it, and I wouldn't recommend that, but if you're gonna close it, it should only be for a matter of seconds. Cause so if you read in her comment that it was just a few minutes before it was sound like it was raining raining poop on the on the top of the roof there and probably everyone around you so you definitely don't want to leave that uh, closed let it do its job by by running the flush through it and pushing those things out but I would not let it fill up and if you are gonna leave it on if you are gonna close it for some reason set a timer for no more than a minute or so and and just be careful because that those tanks if they're 40 gallon or you know, some of the smaller ones is less than that. Uh, I know some Class A is going to have bigger than that, but know your sizes of your tanks is a, a good thing too. Know the size of your black tank, know the size of your gray tank, so you know how to take care of those kind of things. And if you do walk away when you're filling any of your tanks, set a timer. Yes. Everybody's phone has a timer on it now. Set a timer. It will save you a lot of work later. A lot of embarrassment. So we had a lot of comments about the slide, about their accidents or problems they had. So uh, let me read the first one. Mary said, my husband pulled away and drove all the way across the road to the dump <clears throat> with the bays open and the slide out. Mm. Someone didn't walk around. <laughs> no. And you had one left? I do. Shonda said, we forgot to look beside the front slide when pulling it out. A tote bag got caught under the slide and the handle hooked on a fire extinguisher pin mounted next to the slide. Before we could stop it, the camper was filled with flame <laughs> retardant. Oh, what a mess. I've had that happen at work where the extinguisher goes off and it is a mess. So, uh, what would you say to learn about our slides here. What we do before, you know, no matter no matter what, before we pop the slides out or put them in, my job is to go in and check each side of the slide and make sure it's clear. And I'll say this for Lynn, she might have just vacuumed, but she's still gonna go back and check to make sure they're in the way, because you never know what could fall in between there. 
And then also, as we've said, some, the other things is do your walk around. And don't just look at your tire when you're walking around or you might run into to your slide. So you're going around looking to see if your bays are closed and your slides in before you making a quick run over to the dump. So we made our way back over to the sewer area, but this time we're going to talk about gray water problems or accidents. So Lynn, you had one? I do. Quite interesting one, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Left the kitchen sink faucet on slightly and went out for a few hours. Came back to water running out the doors. The gray tank filled, then the shower filled, then the floors. So it was literally running out their front door when they came back. Yeah, water has to go somewhere. You may have an un unlimited supply to bring it in if you're hooked up to a faucet outside, but let me tell you, it's gotta go somewhere. Yep, and then Barry said that they emptied the sewer tank, did the black tank first, did the gray tank second, but he forgot to close the valve to the gray tank. Put the cap back on the opening, and the next trip, he went to go put the sewage hose on and opened it up and gray water flushed out on him. He says, still thanking God that it was not the black tank. <laughs> I so, would imagine so. <laughs> lessons learned, you mentioned one, but go ahead. What lessons should we learn from this? Before you take off and leave your camper, if you're going somewhere for a couple hours or something, do a real quick walk through and just check and make sure you've not left anything on. Yeah, that Especially is water. so important to, to make those quick walkthroughs. You're leaving your house and it, these things can be damaged quickly by, by water. Also, we can learn that have a checklist and we'll talk about checklists quite a bit today and we already have and we will again, but have a checklist to make sure you are pushing that valve back in because mm -hmm. it could be a mess. We've had other people said they had a, the same accident happen with black tank and that, that's, that, that would be nasty. So we've made it to the back of the rig, and what kind of mistakes would we have back here? Backing up, of course. And there were several comments on backing up and having issues and having problems, but we took one that we thought would help. It kind of sum summarized all of them, and it's from Jim. And Jim says, my wife offered to help while I was backing up the Class A. I have great mirrors. I have a great backup camera, so I declined. As I cut the wheels to the right, all what was clear then a loud bang I caught the power pole under the driver's door mirrors and camera were clean really I don't refuse assistance when offered and also look down so what lessons did we learn from that listen to your wife Ooh, that is good advice even when you're not in the RV that's right <laughs> so and also we can learn that you have a spotter when you have one available there's times that you're gonna be by yourself but have a spotter that will help you at least talk to you how close you're getting to things and, and you can work on the communication skills and uh, backup s signals. So we made it over to the electrical and Lynn you had one. From, I do. Uh, who was it from? Jeff. Okay. And it says make sure your electrical cord is unplugged before you pull away from your site. Cost me a fridge, a TV, and an AC. Wow. Expensive mistake right there. Very expensive. So the lessons learned is what we've said before, is do the walkthrough. If the you'd walk have walked around, around your, your rig, you would have caught that. So uh, let's learn from Jeff's mistake there. So the next comment we're gonna talk about has to do with chalking the tires. Danielle says, when we bought our first travel trailer years ago, on one of our first trips, we forgot to chalk the tires. And when we unhooked, our camper took a nice roll like it was going to get away from us. Luckily, there was a concrete barrier that it ran into and stopped. Yeah, it hit the, it hit the wheel stop and stopped there. And we, we saw many other comments where people rode down a hill 12, 15 feet. So make sure you're putting something to block the tires, to chalk your tires. Yeah, it's different with the motorhome. We don't have to worry about that as much because once we're in park, we're pretty down, well, not going to go anywhere and if we're on a hill we always put the emergency brake on yeah we try to always put the emergency brake on no matter what but it, we need to be all aware of that kind of thing so the next thing we want to talk about is towing and hitching so eddie turned in a comment that says we put the hitch on the truck but forgot to put the pin in the hitch we headed out and maybe got a mile away from the house and pulled out at the first red light that we turned at and the camper 
and the hitch hit the road and the safety chains jerked the camper into the back bumper of the new truck. He says, and the great advice, always inspect everything before getting on the road. Good advice. And Lou Ann said, we forgot to put the truck we were towing into neutral. That sounds like a costly mistake. Probably a transmission. <laughs> yes, probably so. So I think Eddie said it best, always inspect everything before getting on the road. And that's probably one of the biggest themes, themes here today. So let's go on to the next one that Marcy had sent in. She said, I've heard of people pulling into rest areas or a full fuel stop. The wife gets out, the husband doesn't realize it, and he drives off without her. Bet they weren't happy. Don't get any bright ideas. <laughs> okay. And so let's go into the next one. It, it deals with uh, the height of your rig. And Lynn, you, you had a couple there and I have one. I do, I have a couple. Let's see, ran our brand new fifth wheel under a very low and very big tree the second time we were out. Entire new roof, including all vents, AC, covers, everything. Progressive was great with our $10,000 claim. Live and learn, we laugh about it now. Yes. So that's good that they can laugh about it now. <laughs> and mine, Paula says, the bridge was 11 feet and 11 inches and our camper was 13 feet. She said they missed it by that much, just by a tenth of a mile away from it and they could have ran right through it and it, it would have been terrible. And the last one. Debbie said, took a country road on first trip. Great country views, but low, low hanging oak limbs. And when we crossed a small bridge, noticed a sign that said strict weight limits. Limbs took off a few vents and broke the AC cover and we made it over the bridge. Mm. So lessons learned. Number one, you've got to know the height of your rig. I've had several people tell me, put a sticker in the, the front and write the height of your, leg, uh, your rig. That way you know when something's coming. What else could we do? Also, there are GPS's that are made just for RVers or anyone with an oversized rig. And if you follow one of those, they will alert you and keep you off the path of the weight limit bridge or the bridge with uh, height restrictions. Right. And we use truck map and I'll link that down below. It's made for truckers, but truckers are pretty high, pretty long, so they know to avoid low, uh, low overpasses. And it also knows to avoid weight restricted bridges and also tight turns. So it's a great app to have. And I'll, like I said, I'll link that below. We just need to, to remember to always look up. There were several people that said they were trying to park next to trees and didn't look up. You always need to look up and see what's going on. And sometimes those, those country trips are great until you get on too, too small of a road with overhangs. So you might want to, uh, use the satellite view to see see that map a little bit better so anything else that's it and that leads us to the question of the day so what is the silliest or maybe perhaps even the dumbest thing you have done during your rv years just put it in the comment below and we'll all learn from each other so as this video is winding down i wanted to read something that was sent in also this was from debbie s and she says I have to say, this is a great idea. I'm sure we learned something. And as long as no one was hurt, it was good to laugh at our mistakes and forgive ourselves. There are a lot of details to remember. Be safe all. Keep making memories. Good or not, keep making memories. Great idea. Right. Perfect idea. Sums up the whole thing. So please hit the subscribe button below. And hit the thumbs up button and the notification bell. Yeah, because we want you to be the first one to get the notification when we send out our next video. So God bless and many safe travels. And until next time, keep RVing, America.